on this 12th Sunday after Pentecost. We're glad you're here, especially because it's our church picnic day. So I'm excited. Um, if you're with us for the first time, you got a packet as you came in. The outer part of the packet is the announcement section. Inside is the service bulletin and the scripture insert. All the words of the service are in the service leaflet. And uh, you will need hymnals for the hymns. And today we're using the black and red Lift Every Voice and Sing hymnal, which you just used, and the blue um, 1982 hymnal. And those are found in the pew racks in front of you or under your chairs. When it comes time for communion, everyone is welcome to receive the sacrament here. And instructions on how to receive communion are in the leaflet when we get to that part of the service. And now before we continue, I'd like to invite you to just take a deep breath and take a moment of silence and become aware of the presence of God in this place and prepare your hearts to worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples, to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. reading from the book of Exodus. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, come, let us deal. Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase, and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Python and Ramesses for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. 
the Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifrath and the other Pua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying, and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because, she said, I drew him out of the water. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 124 in unison. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel not say, If the Lord had not been on our side, when enemies were against us, then would they have swallowed us up alive in their fierce anger toward us. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us and the torrent gone over us. Then would the raging waters have gone by over us. Blessed be the Lord, he has not given us over to be a prey for their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. 
For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many numbers, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ. And individually, we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith. Ministry in ministering. The teacher in teaching. The exhorter in exhortation. The giver in generosity. The leader in diligence. The compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Gracious God, grant us always to seek the truth, come whence it may, cost what it will. Amen. I wonder where they learned it. Those brave, where those brave women in the reading from Exodus this morning learned to stand up to Pharaoh. The midwives, Shifra and Pua, were just two women, two women who could not do everything but they knew they could do something. They did the work God gave them to do. They preserved the lives of baby Hebrew boys. The story that opens the book of Exodus is a horrible one. It begins about 400 years after Joseph saved Egypt from famine and then brought his whole family to live in Egypt. And in that time, a pharaoh arose who forgot Joseph's history. This pharaoh looked out at a growing population of Israelites and was terrified. There were too many of them. He feared the immigrants from Canaan might start to outnumber the Egyptians. He feared that the immigrants from Canaan might not be loyal to Egypt in a war. And so the immigrants from Canaan had to be controlled, oppressed, and turned into slaves laboring for the empire. And finally, when even slavery was not enough to keep them in their place, Pharaoh turned to genocide. It's the old, old story, the power of fear, the fear of the other. Fear of the other was driving Pharaoh to a dark place and to horrifying decisions. Shifra and Pua, on the other hand, also knew fear, but theirs was a different kind of fear. The narrative tells us that Shifra and Pua feared God. This fear was a deep awe and reverence for a power infinitely greater than Pharaoh, a power that would eventually be Pharaoh's undoing. Their fear was fueled by faith. Shifra and Pua had a deep faith, one they had learned from their Hebrew community. The Hebrews knew and worshipped the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. They didn't have scripture yet or the law. That's where this whole story is leading us, you know, to the law on Mount Sinai. But even though that hadn't appeared yet, they must have had rituals and teachings that taught them about God and that connected them to God. They must have had prayers and words and songs that grounded and shaped their faith, words that Shifra and Pua could draw upon when they sought for moral guidance to do the right thing and when they needed the courage to stand up to Pharaoh. I wonder if those words that guided and sustained the midwives were anything like the words of a prayer I learned long ago when I was a teenager. Lord, I am but one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. What I can do, I ought to do. What I ought to do, by the grace of God, I will do. Lord, what would you have me to do? This prayer came floating up from the depths of my memory this week. I learned it when I was 14 years old and a member of the Junior Daughters of the King. The Daughters of the King is a women's group in the Episcopal Church that focuses on prayer, service, and evangelism. And they started a junior chapter for young ladies in my parish church back in Sarasota, Florida. And every Tuesday after school, we gathered in the church library for Bible study and prayer and to learn how to be a proper young church lady under the guidance of some very proper older church ladies. And it's amazing to me that I remember this prayer, the motto of the Daughters of the King after so many years, because when I was a 14-year-old, bell-bottom-wearing, hippie wannabe back in the 1970s, being a proper young church lady was not really my first priority. And in the end, the Junior Daughters of the King ended up not being a really good fit for me, and I moved on. But the little prayer stuck with me. 
And as it rose from memory into my consciousness this week, I realized that this prayer is one of the foundational texts of my whole life. It has affected how I live my life, it has affected my relationship with God, and it has shaped my sense of what I have been put here to do. I am who I am and I do what I do in very large part because of this little prayer. I am but one, but I am one. This is how I understand my place in the world. I have been put here as a unit of God's grace, just like each of you has been put here as a unit of God's grace. I may be small, but that doesn't mean I'm not powerful, just like each of you. You may be small, but you are powerful. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. I get overwhelmed by the misery and suffering in the world. I always have, learning about the Holocaust as a child by reading the diary of Anne Frank, watching the roofs blow off and the waters rise as Hurricane Harvey hit Texas yesterday, going to Haiti with the Haiti Outreach Mission and seeing people who sometimes have to eat cookies made of dirt just to stay alive. The troubles of this world seem too big sometimes. It's hard to see how anything one person can do can make any difference, but then I remember I don't have to do everything, I only have to do something. What I can do, I ought to do. What I ought to do by the grace of God, I will do. This is the voice of conscience in my heart reminding me to put good intentions into action. That the something I can do needs to be done and that it is God's grace that provides the power and the direction to do it. This is the line of the prayer that gets me off the couch and out into the world. Lord, what would you have me to do? This last line reminds me that it is God's work, not mine. God's leading, not mine. That my task is to listen in prayer and meditation to God's voice, to discern what is next, and to be responsive to the Spirit's movement in all of it. Lord, show me what you would have me to do, and I will try to do it. Did I know all these things when I was 14? No, no way. But because I had to memorize the prayer so that I could be a member of the Junior Daughters of the King, it got lodged in my heart. And it has worked on me and with me my whole life long, even when I forgot it was there. It has provided a moral compass and a powerful reminder to do the right thing, that it is possible to do the right thing, and that it is God's leading, God's right thing. And that I don't have to do it all. I just have to do what is set before me, as the prayer says, the work you have given us to do. I don't know if the midwives had any words to guide and sustain them like this, but they must have had something in the back of their minds because Shifra and Pua knew they could not solve the problems of their entire enslaved and oppressed people. They could not do everything. But they knew they could do something. They could save those babies. And they could do it because of God. They could do it strengthened by God, and God blessed them for their faithfulness. I offer this story of Shifra and Pua to you this morning, and I offer you the motto of the Daughters of the King because I think we need to be strengthened by the scripture lesson and supported by the words of this prayer. These are troublesome times that we live in. The news comes at us with the force of water from a fire hose, nuclear threat, racial divisions and hatred, wars that have gone on for decades without ceasing, the refugee crisis, climate change, Twitter storms and Facebook frenzies and leaders who seem rudderless and adrift and who make each week seem like just another episode in some hideous reality show that none of us auditioned to join. And it can feel overwhelming and paralyzing. Like you should just stay home maybe get a big sheet cake and eat it bite by bite until you are numb, numb to all of it. But Shifra and Pua show us another way, not to try to do everything, but to do something. 
And probably that something is right in front of us. It might mean taking a Saturday morning to serve food at Advent House, but it might also mean you carry energy bars in your car to share with the sign people on the street corners. It might mean you work on the sanctuary task force here at church preparing to shelter someone in danger of deportation, but it might also mean getting to know someone not like you, someone from another culture or another faith or another race, and get to know them in a deep and real way. Not just surface niceness, but true friendship. It might mean making a sign and turning out to a rally against hate speech, but it might also mean having the courage to turn to your family member who says something about a Jew lawyer, and instead of keeping silence, say, what do you mean by that expression, Jew lawyer? It's true, we cannot do everything, but we can do something. What we can do, we ought to do. And what we ought to do by the grace of God, we will do. And we will do it only by the grace of God, always by the grace of God. Not our work, not our actions, but God's work, God's actions. God's power working in us, a power that can free slaves and overthrow tyrants, a power that splits waters and shakes mountains, a power that makes it possible, even in these crazy, stressful, and confusing times, to do the work God has given us to do. Lord, what would you have me to do? Amen. And now let us proclaim the ancient faith of the church using the words of the Nicene Creed found on the bottom of the first panel of your leaflet. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. Let us pray. Indwelling God, uphold us to be as you created us, people of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. May the fruits of the Spirit blossom in us all. Wise counselor, where intellect says impossible, 
open us to be an audacious faith that trusts the way of God. Where ego clenches, help us surrender to the miracle of divine grace. Beloved Comforter, lead us to, to the restoring, restoring salve of forgiveness. Soften us to a blessed vulnerability that we may welcome others' confession in tears as well as our own. To plunge into the healing waters of reconciliation. Teacher, Prevent us from pitying the suffering or averting our gaze. So, resuscitate our hearts with compassion that wherever need is, we may inhale love and exhale loving kindness. Revealer of truth, peace and illusions, tearing at the community of life, deepen our sense of relationship to all things, and ever so eagerly awaken us to honor the sacred covenant with earth. God of all peoples and places, protect the children, women, and men caught in conflicts over immigration laws. We pray for families who are separated, for the imprisoned, and for those forced to live where they, they do not wish. We pray for the well-being of our new neighbors who give us the gift of their presence. Oh God, remind me always to welcome the Christ in everyone. Holy Advocate, in our common life, restore hope and a devotion to a more just society. Purge from us fear, indifference, violence, and greed, that there may be peace. We pray for the enlightenment of all souls, especially Donald, our president, members of Congress, and leaders in every place. Holy Spirit, mend me, mold me, use me, that my work may be used for all of us in the world. Great intercessor, hear our prayers for Howard Anderson, Marcia Ostring, Luol Deng, Avon, Nell Corkin, Jim Deering, Joe Hartwell, Tamara Hicks Siren, Catherine Hornbach, Oscar Hornbach, Ted Jensen, Dorothy Loshi, Marty Lippard, Emily Lynch, Barbara Mayers Martello, Folu Ogundimu, Dixie Lee Premer, Kevin Reagan, Karen Rich, Rosemary Severance, Senya Taipale, Jean Tippett, and receive the concerns of people gathered, and for all the people suffering from the hurricane. We pray for those who have died. We offer thanks for the blessings of life, especially the birthday of Benno Stazuski, for whom the star altar flowers are given by Glenn Stazuski and Ellen Armentrout. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
Most merciful God, we confess the faith against you, and you are not worthy of me. I know what you have done, and I know what you have done. We are not worthy of the Lord. We are not worthy of the Lord. We are not worthy of the Lord. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be like you. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please greet one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Theodore. Um, I am the vestry person of the day today. The vestry is the governing board of our church. If you have any questions about All Saints, please feel free to ask me. Um, there are a few important announcements for today. The first is if you're visiting with us today, please fill out one of these visitor and newcomers cards. They can be found in the pew rack in front of you. Um, just place it in the offering plate as it goes by and we'll send you some information about our church. This is the only offering we ask of our visitors today that you let us thank you for being with us. Um, today is the parish picnic, so it's right after the 10 a.m. service. This is our annual All Saints picnic, and we'll provide all the food and drinks. There are children's play activities, including the ever-popular Bounce House, as I'm sure you saw on the way in. Um, this is a great opportunity for us to enjoy our parish family and get to know each other better, so we hope to see you all there. Um, the All Saints Ministry Fair is coming up on September 10th. Please plan on attending. It will be in the Undercroft after the 10 a.m. service. This is a great opportunity for, to, for you to learn more about our church and maybe find a new way um, to serve within the church. The Sunday school kickoff is also September 10th. Um, children will sit with their parents, but then process to Sunday school during the opening hymn. The first unit will be about the Eucharist, and that begins September 17th. Sunday school is, um, is available for children starting at age 3 through 5th grade. And please see Becky Beauregard to complete a registration card if you're interested in Sunday school for your children. Um, for the middle school and high school children, EYC kickoff is also September 10th. So EYC is our youth group. They will kick off with a potluck um, in the evening on Sunday, September 10th at 6 p.m. in the Undercroft. Kids in 6th through 12th grade and their families are very welcome to attend. Please bring a dish or dessert to pass, and you can contact, again, Becky for more information about that. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. And if you were interested in seeing that prayer that I mentioned in the sermon, I, it is printed in your announcement leaflet under the calendar, if that's of interest to you. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
great thanksgiving as it is printed in your leaflet. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ. And in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you, now and forever. Amen. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now sing.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. of God for you, the people of God. Receive who you are, become what you see, the body and blood of Christ.
Stand as you are able and join me in sending forth our Eucharistic visitors. Pam and Neil, in the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share one bread and one cup. The post-communion prayer continues as it is printed in your leaflet. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of the one who made us and who loves us and walks the way with us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and those you love dearly this day and always. Amen. Amen.